Hello and welcome. I'm Austin Kovalarczyk, arranger and composer, bringing you episode 9 of Book Review. Uh, we're doing something a bit different today, because normally the books I talk about have either an instructional content or they're, like the last book, they have more than just music. But this book is just music. Uh, if you're familiar with the concept of a fake book, which is just kind of like a collection of songs that you, kind of like the real book from the jazz scene, if you're familiar with that. If you're not, it's, they're like collections of songs. I could just call it a collection. So yeah, the Fake Book series is a series by the Hal Leonard Corporation, who they publish a fair bit of music in America. I'm not sure if they publish a lot outside of America. But that's kind of our author section. Why? Because they've listed the corporation as the author of the book. And I've got, I'm not going to talk about them when there's something more interesting to talk about. The book. This is the folk song Fake Book. I'm not I'm not usually this anxious to just jump straight in. I'm skipping around my I'm skipping around my script right now. But uh, I'm usually not dealing with a company as the author either, so there's that. And the content of the book is what's got me all fired up. So if you've seen my previous episode of the series, which is uh, Folk Songs Out of Wisconsin, I just I love that book. Great book. It's a wonderful collection of folk songs, but it has a bit more than just the folk songs. And it it helped me notice something that wasn't really in this book, the folk song fake book. Credit. Credit and scholarly integrity. Now, I know it's a collection of songs, and it doesn't have to be some paragon of scholarly integrity. You know, it doesn't have to. But there's, there's next to nothing on the origin of most of these. Like, if I go to, uh, let's see, page 393 is the example I've written down. And I skipped it. There is a song called Outward and Homeward Bound. Where it's... It, all it says is English sea song. You know, technically, factually correct. But... Any kind of research would show you that there's a disputed author for this this book out... This song out there. Like, okay. Uh, yeah, it says English sea song. Who collected it? Where was it collected? Are there any attributed authors? There is. I looked it up. Hal Leonard apparently didn't, but none of this information is there. There's nothing here. It just says English sea song. And when we're talking about like folk and traditional music, I feel like that kind of information is super important. Like I know it's, I know they've kind of passed into the public use and they're no longer considered the creations of their, well, they're still the creations of their original composers, but they're not really thought about that way. But like, if we're talking about these folk songs, where they're from, that's important, but where they were collected, that's a big one. I mean, if you look at the United States, there's probably a hundred some different versions of each folk song, just because this, the country's so damn big. And a sea song, like, if you're working on a ship, you're inevitably going somewhere else, and that's going to cause cross-pollination and influences on your music. But no, nothing, nothing in here about anything. Now, don't get me wrong, there's the occasional, and I do mean occasional, bit of more, more informational stuff, but for the most part it's just like, okay, here, on page 120, there is Coming Through the Rye, Words and Music by Robert Burns. Uh, everything else on this page just goes American, English, Welsh. That's it. That's all the information there is. It's ridiculous. You know, and I know this was published in 2001, January 1st, actually, day before I'm recording this video. This book is almost 22 years old, and it is the exact same version they published in 20, 20, 2001. So why haven't they bothered to update it? You know, they could put this information in. It's not rocket science these days. It's called a Google search. I did four of them just for this book alone. You know, even if it's, like, disputed or unknown, credit some type of author other than just, like, America, Welsh, British folk song. You know, that's, that's important information when you're talking about stuff like this. Where is it from? What kind of person were they? Who collected it? Who did they collect it from? Those are important things, too. And it's, it's just something, I, it's been a bit of a tangent, I'm aware, but I just want to point that out as kind of annoying, and I 
spend so much time reading up and discussing copyright laws because like as a composer and a burgeoning academic that stuff's important to me there's also there's also an incorrect copyright disclaimer it says and i quote for all works contained herein unauthorized copying arranging adapting recording or public performance is an infringement of copyright wrong you know i'm no lawyer this isn't legal advice obviously but if they're really folk songs they're in the public domain you know like you can't lay claim to these as a copyright i mean i guess you can kind of you can own the collection like this specific collection of they claim over a thousand folk songs And I don't disagree with them because there's like four per page and there's 500 pages in here. Ridiculous number. You know, they can own the copyright to this collection. No, no other person can publish a collection of exactly this layout and, you know, list of songs. That's copyright infringement. But they, they don't own the songs. And they kind of perpetuate this idea on each page that this every single song, every single song has a copyright disclaimer that goes copyright 2000 by Hal Leonard Corporation. You know, and maybe you can make an argument for a lead sheet kind of arrangement being an arrangement, and they own that arrangement, but they it's played off kind of scummily, where they... Yeah, I'm just not a fan. I, I won't get into it, but I'll link, my, I'll link some of the sources I used when researching this. Like, Stanford's got a nice copyright and fair use archive website thing, which is something I'm going to return to in the future, obviously. And of course, the 2015... Maria, Maria versus Warner Chapel case revolving around Happy Birthday. If you're familiar with that, where legal precedent was kind of established regarding ownership of traditional songs in the public domain, which I get that that happened after 2001. But like I said earlier, exact same edition. They're still selling on Amazon. I don't know. Just not a fan. Spoiler warning. But yeah, that's that's my main two issues with the book. There's a lack of where I feel is copper credit, proper credit, and there's this very misleading copyright disclaimer. Other than that, I love, I love the idea of a large collection of folk songs. I find it sensational. And I it really sucks that it has these issues. I was Yeah. I guess that was kind of a mixture of my opinion and the content. So I'll just move on to accessibility. This is on Amazon still, exact same edition, and it's a cool 25 US dollars. Quick aside here, because I was writing this script and researching at the same time, I stumbled on a line in the description. Yeah, it's just not true. This is straight up not true. They can't know that in the slightest. It is outrageous for them to claim that they have the original version of each song. If they did, they would know who wrote it. Or sang it originally, and they would credit them properly. Not to mention that, but this is folk music. This stuff was passed down orally. You know, and across generations of people. It evolves. It changes over that time. Yeah, just another issue I have. Technically not with the book. I do guess... I do think it says it in here, actually. Yeah, on the second page... Throughout, through the years, many folk songs have been altered in various ways for the sake of modern perceptions. In this book, however, we've made every effort to retain the original versions whenever possible. You don't know that. You literally can't know that. That's the nature of folk music. You literally can't know that. But I'm... Okay, just silly claims. I'm dragging this out here with my ranting, so let's, let's just get to the final verdict. Do I think you should buy this? My first in instinct is no. You know, I, I love folk and traditional music. I, I think this is a really scummy way to go about it. I understand not needing, like, perfect scholarly integrity on everything, always, but this feels like there wasn't a whole lot of effort put into it. Yeah, I, I think I'll stick with my gut on this one. I don't recommend this book. I do not recommend spending money on it. Save that money for something else. Uh, like, you know, something a little more ethical or with a little more integrity. I'll plug, once again, Folk Songs Out of Wisconsin, which I think does this really well. And honestly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. As you can probably tell, I'm pretty passionate about the subject, and it's heavily colored this review. <laughs> I mean, I talked a lot about my opinions today, and I'd like to know if you do agree or disagree. I'm open for debate, you know. 
leave it in the comment section. I'll I do my best to respond. It's not like I'm being overwhelmed with comments right now. So, yeah. We'll end it here. If you've enjoyed the review, hit the like button, subscribe to see any upcoming ones. I've got some more on the channel, as I've mentioned recently, or four or five times throughout this one, I think. I talked about Folk Songs Out of Wisconsin, one of my favorite books ever. And, you know, if this was your first one, feel free to go look at those. You'll see some more on this end screen. And that's kind of it. Thanks. I'll see you next time.